Welcome back everybody with Uniform Circular Motion. We're doing banked curves this time. Alright, let's look at these example problems. A 500 kilogram car rounds a corner with a radius of 65 new meters and is banked at 30 degrees. Okay, let's do some things. 30 degrees, radius, 65 meters. What speed should the car have in order to make the turn with no assistance from friction? So I'm not sure if you guys have seen this, if you've ri ride cars or anything like that, but sometimes when you have to really make a, a tough, tight curve, the, the, um, the road is banked a little bit like this. So let me show a little bit of what the free body diagram should look like. First of all, we have the force of gravity going straight down like this. Same as always, 500 times 10, 5,000 newtons. And then we're going to have a force normal. And what we should know about the normal force is it's actually going to be more than the force of gravity this time. And the reason why it's more is because since it's making a curve, it's getting pressed into the ground a bit. And that's why their normal force is more than the force of gravity. Key things to know about these bank curve problems. The force normal in the Y is equal to the force of gravity. And the force normal in the X, that's what allows it to curve, okay? The normal force in the X is like kind of pushing it, allowing it to curve in a circle like this. Okay, so let's figure a few things out. Force normal in the Y, 5,000 newtons. We know this angle is the same as the banked angle, 30 degrees, or the angle of the incline. So now what we could do is we could figure out this normal force. We could also figure out uh, the force normal in the X. So I'm going to figure out the first no force normal in the X. So I'm going to do 10 of 30 is equal to opposite force normal in the X uh, over force normal in the Y, 5,000. So I can say force normal in the X is equal to 5,000 times 10 of 30. And we get 2,886.8 newtons. What we should also know is the normal force in the x direction is equal to the centripetal force. Because that's what's allowing it to move in a circle. Especially since there's no friction. It says no assistance from friction. We know this normal force in the x is what's making it move in a circle. So let's just figure this out. 2886. Uh... 0.8 is equal to mv squared over r. m, 500, v, uh, that's what we're looking for, the speed, and the r, which is 65. So let's figure this out. Times 65 divided by 500, v, uh, square root of that, and we get 19.37 per second. Whoopsies. Okay. Um, so we should know this is the speed where you don't need any assistance for friction and you're able to go around this bend without friction at all. Just the normal force in X will be able to do that. So it says if the car went slower than this, what would happen? So if the car went slower than this, then it'd still be able to go around the curve, but there would just be friction helping it. So there would be friction that that will be helping it move a uh, force of friction going this way, keeping it up a little bit as it goes around the curve. It says if the car went faster than this, what would happen? So one thing is it could, if it goes too fast, it'll just skid or drift off. But again, if it goes only a little bit fast, friction will help it by uh, keeping it on and going this time on the other side of it. Okay, so it depends. All right, guys, I hope that made sense. Uh, if the B and C bit was confusing, try not to think about it too much. All right, let's. But we're gonna try other examples with this. A car around the corner a radius of 65 meters, and is banked at 20 degrees. What speed should the car have in order to make the turn with no assistance from friction? So very similar question, but it's slightly more difficult. What you're going to notice is there's no mass for this problem. But let's see if we can figure this out. We know, again, the normal force in the y direction is equal to mass times gravity. It's the same as force of gravity. And we also know force normal in the x is equal to the force in triple. That's what allows it to go in a circle. So first, let's do 10 of 20. Oh, sorry. This angle is 20 degrees, meaning this angle is also 20 degrees. Is equal to opposite force normal in the x. Or, eh, okay. Um, okay. Divided by, sorry, force normal in the y, which is mg. So then now we can say force normal in the x 
is equal to mass, which we don't know, gravity, which is 10, times 10 of 20. And let me just put that number, 10 of 20, which is 0 0.36, 0.36. And we know force going on the x is equal to centripetal force, mv squared over r. So we're going to do 3.6 times m is equal to mv squared, r being 65. What we notice is m cancels out, and we can find what velocity is. 3.6 times 65 square root of that, and we get 15.3 meters per second. Okay? All right, let's move on. I think this is the last one we're going to do. If a rotary is banked at a proper angle, a car can round a corner without any assistance from friction between the tires and the road. Find the appropriate banking angle for a car traveling at 20.5 meters per second in a turn radius of 85 meters. So 85 meters, um, This we're looking for what this angle is, this angle, same angle here. We know the force of gravity is just mg, it's the normal force. We know that the normal force in the y direction is also mg. And we know force norm on x is equal to mv squared over r. So let's figure out a few things. So we should know tan inverse uh, fn of x over fn of y will give us this theta that we're looking for. So let's kind of write that down again. Tan inverse. And it's going to be, so I'm going to put m v squared, which is 20.5 squared, divided by r, which is 85, divided by mass times gravity 10. So mass cancels out, and we could actually all figure what this theta is, doing just plugging all this in. So let's do this. 20.5 squared, divided by 85 times 10, 850. And we can do 10 inverse of that number. And we get around 26.3 degrees. I know I went through this a little bit quickly, and students usually have a hard time. So watch it again if you were, if you were confused at all. Uh, key things to know, normal force is bigger than the force of gravity. Force normal on the y is going to equal the mass times gravity. And the force normal on the x is many times going to be equal mv squared over r as long as there's no friction. All right, guys, thanks for watching.